All right, welcome to BarnBridge Project Call 21. Uh, we have a new face here. I want to introduce Trevor. Trevor, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yeah, hi guys, I'm Trevor. Some of you know me as Specular from the Discord channels. Uh, I've been with BarnBridge since uh, almost the beginning as an investor, and then I've been working on the integrations team for the last couple months, and am now a, a proud new member of the core team. So. Thanks for bringing me on. Excited to be here. Happy to, happy to get started and start delivering. Happy to have you here. Um, with that, I think we should turn it over to Bogdan to do the tech update. Yes, I was excited to do so. Haven't seen anyone in uh, four weeks. Right, so we have a smart exposure. It's launched, the, the app is up. It's still in sort of a um, soft launch mode because we still have some minor updates to make sure it's as smooth as possible. There's a kind of a major patch update coming on that's gonna add some functionality and uh, do some UI cleanup because everything is not, uh, it's not as intended so with the, with the UI. So that's gonna come sometime in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Polygon, all the Polygon stuff. We wrapped up the deployments this week. All the all the cross chain piping is laid. We just currently retesting um, like every little detail of the entire app because we changed um, the way the front end works to accommodate the network switcher functionality. So uh, this means we have to retest the entire app, and that's why we. Uh, kind of delayed the, the launch a bit. It was supposed to be this week, but it's gonna be um, sometime early next week. And it's gonna be for both Smart Yield and Smart Exposure at the same time. Uh, next up, uh, Smart Alpha. For that, we actually wrapped up the uh, Smart Contract development. We're moving uh, forward with the audits. We have them booked uh, exactly a week from now. So they're gonna start on uh, July 15th. Uh, I think we're, in terms of timelines, we're working with um, um, like an early September launch uh, for this because we, uh, we actually have to <laughs> build the rest of the app around the smart contract. Um, yep, so that's it with Smart Alpha, Smart, uh, smart Fiat. Uh, I think the name is out. It's no longer Smart Secret, it's Smart Fiat now. You guys know <laughs> at least the name. Uh, Max has been leaking some uh, some alpha on this word. I uh, I saw that, so <laughs> maybe you know more than just the name. Okay, there are lots of moving parts with it. We're almost done with the with the spec, but I mean, uh, since there are so many parts, work is already deep underway on the smart contracts, on the parts that are more fully spec'd out and that we don't expect to change that much. And we already booked, uh, I think, a mid August. Uh, audit. So it's for uh, August 15th. Uh, this means we're going to, like, for the most part of the development process, we're going to run in parallel with Smart Alpha. And kind of a rough uh, estimate of the timelines, we're looking at a late September release for this. I mean, I, the, don't take this as a promise. <laughs> it's just I thought I'd give a sort of a tentative timeline that we're working with so everyone knows what, uh, what they should expect. But we'll keep you guys posted on the on the following calls uh, if and if anything changes. All right, I think that's uh, that's about it. Thanks. Uh, yeah, definitely. The smart fiat stuff is probably going to be one of the biggest things to hit DeFi in a while, but a lot to be said. Um, with that. Let's turn it over to the operations. Uh, Christian, do you want to do an in, like a like an overview, and then we can turn it over to Pablo and Max? Sure. Just real quick up front. Um, hey everyone. Uh, you know, as Boggan mentioned, you know the forthcoming releases are going to be really exciting, but also there's a lot of moving parts. So I've been working with him over the past couple of weeks, especially this past week, to really build out a refined product and operations tracking process that. You know, is, is rooted in the work we did together at Alethio uh, Consensus. I think this will really help aligning our communications with the community, aligning our planning and allow the ops and marketing efforts to be working in lock, lockstep with Bogdan and the dev team. 
Um, so really excited for how this will help us as the next two months kind of unfold. Um, with that, I'll pass it over first to Pablo to talk through some marketing updates and then Max for um, some integrations updates. Hi everyone. Um, so first of all, uh, an update regarding the website. So dark team is done uh, and uh, a couple of other updates on that front, but um, because of we have made some back, some major backend changes uh, and in particular for SEO uh, <clears throat> purpose, we need to reset up the infrastructure for the website. So it will take a bit longer, uh, especially now since the dev resources are uh, focused on the um, product launches. So we expect the, the, website, the, the website update to be rolled out next week. Um, we've had a really nice call with the uh, motion designer today. I figure out next steps on that. Um, just uh, we, we'll, we already have the video script down and we expect uh, the first video about Bomb Bridge uh, that, that will come up, like it's a rough estimate, but that will be sometime in the end of months or <clears throat> start with the next one. Um, then an update about the communications strategy. So we have previously closed the Telegram group uh, just because the communication was not efficient there. Uh, but then now we, for anyone who is using Telegram as their preferred daily communication uh, app, we have set up a separate FarmBridge official announcements channel. So if you want to uh, stay updated and uh, on, on the website, on the project news and updates, you can uh, you can follow the channel on Telegram as well. And uh, especially now, since a ton of things is going on, uh, with, this past week has been crazy uh, on both dev and operations side for everyone with all these token listings, product launches. Um, so it's just also, it all comes down to, we, we have been working a lot on getting the, all the announcements put, put together and preparing everything for the launches. Um, we have rolled out the um, smart exposure educational materials. We have revised the uh, smart yield guide that we'll be sharing next week when, when the smart yield and Polygon actual launches. So um, a lot more things to come. Uh, we have been also mentioned on CoinDesk and uh, today CoinMarketCap Alexandria um, section released an article about what is Bonbridge. So check it out as well. And looking forward to the product launches. Uh, I can take it from there and apologies for any uh, external noise coming in. There's a sweeper next door by the sounds of it. Um, <laughs> uh, so the main thing I wanted to bring up is that our fourth DAO vote is now live. Um, it's currently in the warm-up phase and voting will be enabled, I believe, sometime this weekend, either beginning of Sunday and of Saturday or so. Uh, and that DAO vote encompasses the snapshots that we've done over the past six or so weeks. So that includes a 60,000 bond deposit into the bond BNT pool on Bancor, uh, the buyback associated with the Nexus Mutual shield mining rewards, um, the creation of the Immunify bug bounty program, which uh, Pablo and myself are kind of working to now uh, kind of get in place on their website. There's a few questionnaires we have to go through to set that all up. Um, and then also the change of the DAO parameters themselves. So instead of having this 444 kind of process uh, for voting uh, on proposals, we'll move to a 232 uh, just to give us a bit more, uh, you know, flexibility and being able to pass um, DAO votes going forward. And we'll also kind of, I think, add documentation on how anyone can initiate a DAO vote if they have enough um, V bond either themselves or delegated to them uh, because the, the process itself um, can be done within the UI uh, even for kind of non-technical community members once we have that documentation live. Um, 
some some other items I wanted to touch on. Uh, as usual, it will be a, a laundry list, <laughs> so bear with me. Um, but with this past week, we essentially saw the conclusion of the three months uh, that were allocated for the integrations team pilot. Obviously, Trevor is with us here today, so. Um, it's been a very fruitful process in my opinion, and I'll be sharing kind of a post-mortem on what was accomplished, what could be improved, and kind of where we're going forward uh, with the folks that were on the integrations team, just kind of from the lessons learned there. Um, secondly, uh, with Polygon uh, Smart Yield launching next week, uh, kind of raised the question about how we're thinking about uh, kind of doing liquidity mining on that front as we've been doing on Ethereum mainnet. Um, from kind of, you know, kind of like taking the context in here, right? Um, there's, there's a few moving parts. So it's essentially with, with Polygon, the expectation is that more people will be inclined to enter the senior side, um, you know, even without smart fiat in the wild for, for a few months. And so it does give us an opportunity with this kind of fresh start to rethink how we go about, uh, you know, rewards. Um, so we're looking into a few vectors on that front. Uh, one being incentivizing LP pools rather than just primary deposits. Um, another element is looking into UMA's KPI options um, mechanism. Right, because I think we've seen a few other DeFi projects go down that route. Uh, and I had the chance to speak with Uma earlier this week. Um, so while there is a current ongoing forum discussion about the you know, absolute number of bond tokens that kind of get devoted to that effort, I, I think the actual implementation could be completely new versus what we're doing on mainnet. And the cool thing is that because this is a new kind of TVL base that will form, we can use this as a pilot for how we go about refreshing the Ethereum mainnet rewards, uh, especially in this lead up to smart fiat, right? Because essentially our, our view is that that junior TVL needs to be there when smart fiat launches. And so we'll, we have to figure out what the most efficient way of preserving that TVL over the next few months might look like. Um, and then lastly, uh, from an integrations perspective, there are uh, kind of like two um, things in the works at the moment, that being ImmuneFi, which I alluded to earlier. Um, so essentially, we'll be maintaining a 250K uh, bug bounty program, where essentially that money doesn't have to be escrowed. We can invest that maybe, you know, on Polygon Smart Yield to rolling weekly seniors or the like. Um, and once that program is, is live, uh, we'll actually be participating in a bounty match program with the Armor Fi team. Uh, so they'll be matching our bug bounty program one to one, essentially, you know, making the possible total max payout at 500k versus just our 250k. Um, so that I think that'll be an exciting way to ensure that we're really getting the best eyes on our code uh, from ImmuneFi's uh, white hat hacker uh, base. Uh, and then the other uh, aspect on that integrations front is that Daniel from the integrations team has been actively working with the boardroom team. Um, and it sounds like we'll have a kind of like V1 of Barnbridge on boardroom, uh, you know, the coming weeks, if not next month. Um, and I think that's, that's pretty exciting, right? Because, uh, you know, a number of other kind of leading DeFi protocols rely on boardroom for kind of condensing all of their governance uh, bells and whistles in one place. And so I'm excited to see that kind of come to fruition after a, a few months of chatting with them. Um, but that's it from me. So I'll, I'll give it back to Christian. Uh, we can go from there. Um, back to you, Troy, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm actually curious about like how that boardroom is going to work. So, it, are are they integrating into how DAOs work on the sense of like function calls, and then they just like put it into their UI? Essentially, yeah. So I don't know. To, we're we're still assessing to what extent our forked um, kind of DAO code would require a kind of like adapter on their end. Presumably, it will. Um, so this first iteration would probably just be links to all our various uh, kind of governance forums and mechanisms. Uh, and then, you know, as we go on further down that road, we can actually start building in uh, the functionality associated with, with using the DAO contracts. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, it's interesting. Like, I think uh, it's definitely needed in the ecosystem as a whole. Um, I just, I just like that it's called boardroom because there was a uh, consensus project called boardroom at one point. <laughs> it, it didn't go very far. <laughs> but um, anyway, we can take that offline. Um, if there is any other things anybody wants to go over, uh, there's no round table or anything. So with that, I think, I think the next big things that are gonna come out are Aave is going to have an integration uh, or we're gonna integrate into Aave probably like with the proposals going out today. So that's a big one um, past that. I think uh, there's going to be a lot of other stuff going on behind the scenes for a while, to be honest. So we'll see everyone in two weeks. And hopefully there's a lot to report. I think there's going to be a lot to report. So everyone, have a good time. And we'll see everyone in two weeks. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.